This video will discuss cycle count. The transaction codes used for cycle count are MI01, MI31, MI02, MI04, and MI24. Uh, if we look at here, cycle count falls under the inventory category. So cycle count, another term used for it is physical inventory count. So as an example would be you have a store and every week you check inventory to make sure that the number of chocolate bars or products that you have match what's on your books. And if you have less or more, you, you wish to uh, have an explanation for that. So that's an example of it. Um, as far as like uh, for Maple Leaf Foods, uh, it's good to do it maybe once every month or every three to six months. Uh, weekly might be a little too much, but uh, if you do it every few months, that's good. And the way a cycle count works is that uh, you will create a sheet. And this sheet, we call it a cycle count sheet. Well, uh, you put in the number, the parts that you wish to count. So let's say you are you have a couple of bins in your stores. You have bin A, bin B, and then you have just a random uh, parts that are not in bins. So bin A, you put all the bin A parts together in one sheet. Bin B, you put them all together in one sheet, and then you put the miscellaneous parts in another sheet. So you have three sheets. Once you create the sheet, you should go do the perform the count. So you print out the sheet. You go do the count, you see, you take uh, notes of what's there. So you write down like maybe one or two or three parts. And then what you do, you enter the count. Once you enter the count, uh, SAP will show you if there's any differences. And if there's any differences, it's up to you to either recount or to uh, post the differences. So once you post the differences, you have to ex give an explanation why there's a difference in inventory. Why there's a, is there more or less? And once you post the difference, um, it will update inventory. And you have to create a cycle sheet count, a cycle count sheet every time you do a uh, physical count. So you can't use the same sheet for the following time you count again, which is like let's say you do it every six months. You can't use that same sheet. You have to create a new one. Now you could use the same list from the sheet, but you just can't use the same sheet. Now we're going to start off by creating the sheet. So there's two ways of creating the sheet. One of them is through MI01 and the other one's through MI31. The difference in the two is that MI01 is you enter it manually. You just enter each part number one at a time. Now MI31 allows you to put multiple parts in one, but you have to have a commonality, which is usually the storage bin. So if you have a series of parts, they're all in, let's say, bin A, and uh, you have labeled them in the material master record that they're all in bin A, then you could go into MI31, input bin A, and all the parts that are in bin A will appear, and then you just create a cycle count sheet for all the parts that are there. Now, if they do not have the same spelling for their storage bin, or is they're labeled differently, or there are just differences in them, you can't utilize that you'll have to use MI01 and enter it manually. Afterwards, you could go into MI02 and change your physical count sheets. You could either add more or remove, delete items from the sheet. Or you could just delete the sheet altogether. Afterwards, you enter the count. You could use MI04 or you could use MI24. MI24 is a pretty powerful transaction code. It allows you to see a list of all the physical sheets, cycle count sheets that you have. And it also lets you enter the count, lets you enter a, a recount, and it lets you post the differences and see the differences that, that have been posted. So that's a pretty powerful transaction code. So we'll begin. We'll first start off by creating, uh, using MI31 to create a cycle count sheet automatically. So when you click here, you got to first put in your plant, we'll put 2507. Then you put your storage location, which is 0054 uh, plant preventive maintenance for plant maintenance. And then you put your your material type, which is URSA for spare parts. Very important that you select data and issue logs. It's very important to select this. 
if you don't select this, these two create automatically the sheet, so it might not create what you're looking for. Afterwards, you open this up, and under here, you remove quality inspection and blocked, and you check off included material subject to physical inventory. The purpose of this is that there's different stock types you could use. There's unrestricted use and quality inspection and blocked. Now, unrestricted use for uh, plant maintenance is what we use there. Uh, quality inspection block we do not use. Uh, we do not have any of them in QA, um, any of our spare parts, and we do not have any of them reserved. Either they're there or they're not there, and if they're there, they're going to be used. Um, so you only want unrestricted use just for basic usage. If you check this off, include material subject to physical inventory, it's because you wish to ensure that any part that's already been put on a physical document, uh, a cycle count sheet, is included here. Afterwards, you want to put in the date that you're going to do the count. So we we'll pretend we're going to count today, which is 11 uh, October, uh, November 24th, and then you put your bin. So bin A here in this case. Here now you actually want to put the bin you're looking for. So down here we actually put bin A as just a label, while here we're putting bin A because we only want to look for all materials that are in bin A. Afterwards, we'll press execute, and it'll give you all the items in bin A. What you could do here, if you want all the items in bin A, you just highlight them all, and you press create documents. Right now, I just added the description of the parts, so this will help. So you highlight them all. And then you put create documents if you're happy with all these. Then you press back, it's been created. And voila, you've created this. Now we'll know, do the same thing for bin B. We'll call this bin B. We'll make sure that all our values are correct, which they are. And we'll press execute. Here's all the items for bin B. In this case, I'm only going to select these first two. I'm just saving, make sure this saves. So we'll create the documents. Just We just want it for the roller and the motor timing belt. Create the documents. Now we can show results. Here's the physical inventory document. It's called bin B. On this date, there it is. So we could create another document from here. We could create one for this. Show results. We have two physical documents now. And so forth. We'll leave these two alone. Next, we're going to go create one cycle count sheet manually. So here we put uh, miscellaneous, we put the plant, storage location, and the date. So then we press enter, and here we put the part number, and then you press save. And voila. Now that we've used both MI01 and MI31 to create cycle count sheets, we need to go uh, use MI24 to check the status of everything. So we're going to go in here.
and we're going to put the plant and storage location. If you know this physical document number, you could put it there. If not, just press execute. Here what I'll do, it'll give you the status of everything that currently exists. So these have already been counted. These have not been counted. So if we look here, we see that this material, which is the reducer gear, was counted on this date by this person. And the original quantity was zero. It was counted one. There was a difference of one. So what we'll do in this case, we're going to count a few of these. So we'll take the sheet here, uh, 68. We just click on it. Here's all the parts that need to be counted. We could print it. The print will look this way. And then you put your values here. Once you enter your values, you could enter your count. So in this case, I'll say there was a uh, three, three, two, five, one, two, two, six. You press save. We press refresh. It shows that all these have been counted. It shows the original quantity. It shows the difference. So we'll see right here the difference. So in this case, what happened is that we counted this material here, which is the gearbox. On this date, we there was a quantity of one, but we counted three, and there's, thus there's a difference of two. So now we got to post the difference. So we will select this, we will post the difference, press enter, and ask why is there a difference. So there's two reasons you could have. It's either 10 or 20. So movement type 701 is going into inventory. That means the inventory is higher than expected. So it means there's product going into inventory. Movement type 702 means that the, inv the inventory is less than expected. So there's inventory going out of invent. There's less product in inventory than expected. So we'll post the difference now. Save. We press refresh. We will now it's been counted, adjusted. There's the material document. The material document will then show the difference. So here's a material document. There's this much material. Quantity of two was put in via uh, movement type 701. Bin A, storage location. And it was uh, charged to the cost center. We will now count a few more. We will do this whole document here. 
we'll enter a count. We'll put those three and four. Press save. We'll press refresh. We'll see that there's a difference of three and two. We will then say that we want to recount. So change count, sorry. So then we change the count to two and two. Save. We refresh. Now the difference is of only two, and this one there's no difference. We will then post this one here. Save. We refresh. Count adjusted because there's no difference. Now this one we will post the difference, but there's going to be a certain value that's different, which is 10 because the inventory was higher than expected. Refresh. There you go. Since there's Amigo transit, since there is a difference in inventory, we have to put some inventory. We have to put some items into inventory. Does it creates a material document? Now we'll do this one here. We enter count. We could put set zero count. We press save. You press refresh. It's been counted. Now we press post difference. Save. We press refresh. It's been counted, adjusted. So you can press just zero count if you like. Now, as you can see, we only have two documents left to go. Not yet counted, these two. So I will enter count. I'll set both to zero. S save because there's none in stock. Refresh. Now I'm going to post all these. Post difference. Enter. Zero ten. ten. We refresh. As you can see, all of them have been done. All have been counted, all have been adjusted. Everything's good. So, so now we could look at some statistics if we like. We could look here, we could look at some statistics. We counted eight, we cleared eight. Eight items. Could it here? This one had a quantity of three, the book value is one, difference was two, and so forth. Now you could look at the history here. You could sort by material. And you can see the history of a material where things change. Like here, five, you can kind of see what happened with it. So if we now look at our physical inventory, you'll notice that this has changed. We go back in, and here's our new values. Our inventory has gone up from $885 to $2,158. So to review, Cycle count, what you do, you create first a cycle count sheet using MI01 or MI31. Then you could change the cycle count sheet with MI02. And then you could go into MI24. You look at all your cycle count sheets. You enter counts. You post differences. You could enter recounts and you save. That is all.